Good evening and welcome to Health Smart. I'm Joanne Campbell and I'll be your host tonight. Health Smart is a series of health related programs brought to you by Hudson Valley Hospital Center. Every month we have a new topic and a new guest. Uh, this evening I'm excited to tell you that we're in the Cheryl R. Lindenbaum Cancer Center. Uh, that we just opened last year, and I'm delighted to introduce our Director of Radiation Oncology, uh, Dr. Chika Mandu. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, our pleasure. So radiation oncology, uh, you, you know, this is, this is a big deal for the community to bring, to bring really the science uh, and technology for, for people with cancer in our community. Um, first, why don't you tell us something about yourself? Um, well, we'll start off by saying that I'm a radiation oncologist, mm -hmm. and uh, really what that means is that I use x-rays, high energy x-rays, to treat cancer. Um, so when someone has uh, cancer, you can be treated several ways. You could be treated with surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. Sometimes one gets, you know, just one modality of treatment. Sometimes you get a combination of them, uh -huh. and that's how I come in. Okay. And your background? Well, um, you know, once you finish medical school, you train, you, you do a residency program in radiation oncology. So I was trained at University of Pennsylvania. And uh, after that, I took an attending job at Georgetown University Hospital, um, where I was chief of breast service and also residency program director. Uh, I was there for a few years and just recently moved up to New York for family reasons. And here I am. Great. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. So why don't we discuss what's new in radiation oncology? Perfect. Um, so over the years, things have uh, certainly progressed for the better in radiation oncology. We've gone from machines uh, that had less capabilities to machines that are more comp comprehensive now. And with regard to treatment planning, we've uh, definitely taken you know greater strides with regard to getting dosed where we want to get it and reducing the amount of dose that normal tissues uh, see. So you know, back in the day with treatment planning, we would use what you call two two-dimensional uh, therapy. Now we've moved on to three-dimensional therapy, IMRT, which is intensity modulated radiation therapy. And really what that means is using tiny little pencil beams that come in from different angles to target what we're trying to treat. And even to take it further, there's also IGRT, image-guided radiation therapy, where you incorporate IMRT with image guidance to make sure that you're really being accurate with your treatment. Okay, so it's really about accuracy. So, exactly. so uh, you know, getting the right dose, at, I guess the lowest level for the patient, most comfortable level, the right dose, and exactly in the right area that, exactly. that you want to go. Mm -hmm. and, and this is two-dimensional to three-dimensional, and this is what our new uh, machines are, are able to do with the expertise, of course. And one positions. can even argue for a dimensional, right? So, okay. you know, we've gone beyond the just standard three-dimensional and improved upon that to IMRT and then IGRT. And so when a, when a patient is recommended to come to the, the center, um, can you just walk us through that a little bit and give Absolutely. us an idea? Absolutely. So uh, when a patient is diagnosed with cancer, uh, let's say if the surgeon recommends that they come to get radiation, uh, therapy, they'll come in for what we call a consultation. Prior to the patient showing up, we'll get the patient's uh, medical records, go through them. That way we make sure we have everything that we need. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the patient comes in, we'll discuss, uh, you know, their medical records um, and their cancer facts and the reasoning behind recommendation for radiation for part of their cancer treatment. Um, if the patient is agreeable at that point, then we'll have them come back for another appointment, which is called a simulation appointment. The simulation appointment basically simulates what happens every day for their treatment. So depending on what kind of cancer that they have, if they have a head and neck cancer, they're laying flat on their back with a mask made for their head so they're not moving their head from side to side. Mm -hmm. um, for other types of cancers, they can be in a different immobilization device and we'll do a scan so that we can visualize where the cancer is or where we want to treat. And the patient gets some marks on their skin. We call them tattoo marks. Um, but they're tiny little dots. They're just like mm -hmm. that. Okay. And it helps us um, line the patient up each time. Uh, that way they're in exactly the same position when they come in for their treatment. After that, the patient goes home and all that information is pulled into a treatment planning system. And I sit down with a dosimetrist and physicist and we devise a plan for that patient. Um, and once that's done, 
then the physicist will actually do what you call a quality assurance test on their treatment plan to make sure that my prescription is actually translating into the actual treatment that we want mm -hmm. to see. Okay. And once that, that's verified, we have the patient come back another day for their first treatment. And when they come back, they're lined up to the tattoo marks again, and we'll do a quick low-dose CT on the tomo, uh therapy machine. And through a process that we call image registration, that low-dose CT is now overlaid with the initial simulation scan to make sure that the patient's lined up. I see. And once everything's lined up, they get the first treatment. Okay. So, so you know, what a safe and accurate and, and wonderful resource for the community to get this high level of skill and technology right here, you know, at Hudson Valley. It's, it's really quite awesome. Um, now, with that, let's talk a little bit maybe about the technology itself. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what we have is a tomotherapy machine, and what it really does is um, it in integrates a treatment machine with an imaging machine. So like your regular CAT scanner, um, it integrates that with uh, the ability to treat. And when a patient comes in, um, they can, uh, on the table, the table moves in and out of the mm -hmm. actual uh, tomotherapy machine. So I can actually show you a picture right here, and that should come up on your screen behind me. So this is what um, the machine looks like, yeah. and the patient goes in mm -hmm. uh, to the treatment machine, and what we do is we'll do a verification scan, register the images. So the gray is the um, initial simulation scan, and then the green, um, or blue, as some people call it, okay. um, is the image that we get at the time of treatment, and we overlay them, and once that's okay. um, accurate, then the patient gets their treatment. So the great thing um, about the tomotherapy machine is it has both of these capabilities within it. So you can image and then treat, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and it has what you call multi collimators, MLCs, within it. That way, when you have radiation beams coming in, you can block certain paths of the radiation beams if they're normal tissues that you don't want to see the uh -huh. radiation beam. The tomotherapy machine is able to come in from different angles um, to treat, or you can actually direct it to just use static fields and treat just a certain angle and not go to other angles, depending on what normal tissues that you want to spare. So, so the patient stays immobilized, and 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 because you got it all lined up, exactly. And then the machine is is programmed to to send these teeny, you know, laser beams of health into that tumor. Um, from multi-directions, am I understanding you correctly? Uh, absolutely. So we have an HD machine. So the HD means helical direct. Uh -huh. So we have the ability to treat in a helical fashion. Okay. So all around, right. okay? Um, for something like prostate cancer, you can come in from all different directions because really the prostate is in the middle. So you want to come in from different directions uh -huh. and really target what's in the middle. Uh, for something like breast, you can use the direct version of um, uh, the Tomo machine, and which means you really just come in and from a certain angle and uh -huh. blocking out the other side because we don't want to treat the other breast. Right. Okay. So very, very specific, um, you know, high tech, but very specific and, and, and ergo, I imagine, very effective exactly. uh, for people. Um, uh, the, the cancer center concept. So now, you know, we have this this new center, which doesn't, you know, here we're talking specifically about the radiation mm -hmm. oncology side, mm -hmm. uh, but the integration you spoke about prior to us going on the air was really intriguing about how everybody works together uh, and, and <clears throat> to care for this patient who's, you know, stressed out and going through, you know, pretty intense therapy. Exactly. Um, this cancer center was really set up to bring cancer care closer to home for a lot of patients. Um, you know, this community has a lot of patients who that are diagnosed with cancer and they have to go very far for the treatment. And really what it does is in, integrates radiation oncology, medical oncology, infusion um, closer to home for the patient. So if, when you come into a cancer center, on one side is the radiation oncology department, um, and on the other side is the medical oncology department and the infusion center. Mm -hmm. uh, a patient can really get all the care here. And upstairs we have our surgeons and across the street also surgeons that we work together with. Um, so you don't have to go very far for right. treatments. With regard to radiation oncology, 
you know, most patients will have to come in every day for about two weeks for palliative cases or even up to eight weeks for definitive cases depending on the kind of cancer. And that's a lot of problem for a lot of families. We're talking about transportation issues, we're talking about family responsibilities, we're talking about the emotional toll and the time that it takes um, to get you know, far away just to get your treatment. So this is good for the patient because they can get all of that here. Um, you know, like we talked about, we're able to talk um, with our medical oncologists, or surgeons, or tumor boards, and things like that to make sure that we coordinate the care of the patient. We have a nutritionist on board uh, with our cancer center. That way, when you have patients uh, like head and neck cancer, they have difficulty eating mm -hmm. through the course of treatment. So you have a nutritionist that actually, you know, talks them through the course of radiation therapy or chemotherapy to make sure that they get the nutrition they need. And the Cancer Center just recently hired a patient navigator. And that's absolutely important for patient care because now you have a patient who has cancer, who has different doctors that are doing right. the different things right. for this uh, one patient. It's good to have a patient navigator, a go-to person who can sort of direct them with regard to what needs to be done next, what's, what's happening now, and where are we going in the future. So, so this integrative approach, but also the patient as the center of, of all of our activity to, to, to comfort the, cent, uh, the patient physically, mentally, emotially, spiritually. I mean, you know, we, we all, we're all sensitive to the, to the cancer diagnosis. Um, now, uh, again, uh, let me go back to the, to the technology. Um, people uh, come in, what, what are the, um, have you done better since it's so direct with side effects and how people feel? I mean, you know, the old war stories compared to current, I think it's an opportunity for us to talk to the community about that. Exactly. So like I talked about with IMRT and the newer machines that we have, you are able to better direct the radiation beam to your target and reduce the amount of dose that your normal tissues get. So take, for instance, someone who has urine cancer who comes in and we're treating the pelvis, okay? We can direct our radiation beams to where we think the cancer cells are mm -hmm. and reduce the amount of radiation that the bowel gets. Uh -huh. So you don't have patients who have a significant amount of diarrhea, you don't have a significant amount of fatigue or nausea because we're reducing the amount of radiation that there's over That's awesome. That's really the good news, I think. Um, now, uh, again, the, the patients can call here direct um, if they're in, you know, if they feel like, you know, they're in the situation where, you know, they're going to need some help. Um, you're working with the outside oncologist, um, uh, so we have the um, infusion side, we have the radiation side, and we have a navigator to help in between. Um, why don't we tell the, uh, the people out there, if you want to talk into the camera, and give them our phone number and let them know that they can call directly here and make an appointment if they want more information. Excellent. So uh, if you have a cancer diagnosis and you'd like to get treated here, you can either call us or you can have your physician actually call us. Um, either way, we'd love to see you here. Our number is 914-293-8450. Again, 914-293-8450. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Nadu. It's such a pleasure to have you here, and, uh, and I hope everybody in our community really appreciates, uh, you know, what this Cheryl Lindenbaum Center can, can offer everybody. Thank you. And so now we've talked a lot, but let's go and take a tour of the center. Okay, and now, Dr. Madhu, if you take us on a tour of your beautiful radiation oncology center, we'd appreciate it. So give us an idea of what a patient, you know, would experience. No problem. When a patient comes in, um, let's say for the assimilation appointment that we talked about earlier, they'll come in through this door. We have a nurse's station here, mm -hmm. um, and the nurse will lead them into the changing rooms. We have two changing rooms, one for males and one for females. So okay. we have gowns in the back and the restroom. Okay, let's take a walk in because it looks really nice in here. Very zen. Very zen, yeah. Uh, so, so patients come in and they change into their gowns. Exactly. So we have uh, changing rooms in here. We have gowns that are laid out for the patients. Mm -hmm. And we have lockers so they can put their belongings in there and lock them up and right. take the key with them. Right. Um, and uh, they can have a seat out here and the therapist will come and get them once they're ready. Right. So this is, an, this is kind of the waiting room after the changing room. Exactly. Uh, which gives them an opportunity to center themselves. Exactly. And a little bit more privacy. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okie doke. 
All right. And then uh, and someone the will come, greet them, and bring them through. Exactly. Um, we have a female changing room, which is exactly the same. Okay. And we have a therapist here. They'll grab the patient. And, and let's uh, tell me a little bit about the therapist. So this is Anne and Denise. Okay. And they are, someone's at this desk, and what they're doing is they're taking the report off the machine? Exactly. So the treatment plan is already imported into the uh, treatment console. So when they bring the patient back, they'll identify the patient, uh, usually by at least two uh, methods, by name, face, mm -hmm. uh, date of birth, things right. like that, to make sure that we have the right patient. On the That's machine. right. Um, and then the patient comes in here and gets set up in the exact position where they were set up the first time when they came in for the assimilation appointment. This is our tomotherapy machine, and right now we're set up for a prostate uh, patient. So the patient is going in feet first. Uh -huh. um, we have the laser beams there to make sure that the patient's lined up to the tattoo marks. Um, and this table can come up and then go in and out of the treatment machine. Okay, and the treatment machine looks kind of open, which is nice. So Which is great yeah. because um, if it was closed, then patients may have a little bit of, who have claustrophobia may sure. have some problem with sure. it. Sure. Um, and depending on what kind of uh, treatment the patient's getting, we can set them up differ differently. We have a different board over there. We also have a prone breast board where the patient can lay flat on their uh -huh. stomach. Okay. Um, because how, lo how long are the treatments? How long are they going to, you know, want to make them comfortable enough to, you know, to get through the treatment? And how long is that? It does vary uh -huh. depending on uh, what part of the body and how large the target is. Okay. Uh, for smaller um, organs like prostate, it could be about three to four minutes. Um, for things that are larger, it could take up to 10 minutes. Okay. It really depends. Great. So, so we want people comfortable and relaxed. Exactly. And uh, so I have to look up then and see this, this, this great... Um, it's vision. A sky. It's a great sky. Okay, tell us about that. Well, this is really done to just sort of relax patients. You know, this is uncomfortable, really, when you think about it. People are out of their comfort zones. Uh, and when you're going through the anxiety of going through radiation treatments for your cancer, we want to make sure that you're as relaxed as possible. So we have the sky up here, and we have a little bit of music. A little and bit of music. Patients can pick whatever kind of music they want uh, right. to listen to the treatment. Right. Well, I'm sure it's about setting up relationships. I mean, we, we now have bigger and better relationships with technology, but people are still people. Exactly. And I think it's what we do so awesome here. Exactly. Okay. I agree. Very good. So um, next I'll show you our assimilation room. Okay. It's where uh, we do the treatment, um, initial treatment setup. When a patient comes in, uh, we'll go into this room here. Okay. And this is a dedicated CT scanner that we have for our department. And when a patient comes in, the patient is placed uh, in the treatment position and we'll do a quick CT scan. Uh -huh. um, and the patient can get tattoo marks like we talked about um, to help line the patient up each time they get treated to make sure that they're in the same treatment position each time. Again, thinking about that comfort level, every time you come in, you don't have to be remeasured and remarked. Exactly. This, that's why we use the word tattoo, but it certainly isn't a tattoo. It is. A, it actually is a tattoo. It's uh, Indian ink, uh -huh. uh, but it's just a little tiny dot like that on the skin. Okay. Um, you know that helps us line up the patient to the laser beams. That okay. way. We're in the same position. So this time. would be the, the first assessment visit where, you know, you understand what you, you know, put the patient here, take a picture of what you need to see, and then, and then set them up with the markings so that they can come into the TOMO machine every time. Exactly. Easy in and out. Exactly. So a patient comes in for a consultation, and then we bring them back for assimilation at another appointment, and this is what we'll do. So if someone um, has, let's say, head and neck cancer, we can make a mask for their face. That way the head is not moving from side to okay. side. Okay. And we'll, you know, do tattoo marks for other parts of the body. Right. Um, and then when they come back later, after the treatment plan's done, then they go into the tumor machine for their treatments. Okay, excellent. Very, very exciting. And we have our sky here. Oh, we again. Thank you for another sunny sky. <laughs> but, but again, it's what the staff is trying to say to the patients. Exactly. I, I, you know, it's just, it's just really great. 
technology and, you know, compassion. Okay, and now off to the conference room? That's correct. Great. We have um, a cancel center conference room where we meet um, for different kinds of meetings. And one great thing about it is also that once a week, um, I'll meet with a medical oncologist and the staff uh, for radiation oncology and medical oncology so that we go over the patients uh -huh. and make sure that we're all on the same page. I can't st stress patient safety enough. This is great because everyone sort of knows what the patient's supposed to be getting. Okay, so this is where um, you and the staff can come and everybody's getting on board to know who's coming for what exactly. and, and um, creative ideas about, I guess, the flow and what's happening. Exactly. Wonderful, wonderful. So on the other side um, of this conference room is the medical oncology office, and then even beyond that is the infusion center. So they have their patients, we have our patients, and what we try to make sure to do is meet together and make sure that right. you know, everyone's on the same page with regard right. to patients who are getting chemotherapy, who are just getting infusions, who are getting radiation Right, therapy. that integrative approach, exactly. I mean, that's where we are, and exactly. we know it makes it better for everybody. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Madhu, again, for, for coming this evening and, and helping us to understand the great opportunities that our community has in this resource. Uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you for watching Health Smart, and uh, I hope you come back next month when we'll have another guest and another time.